Okay, we are here with our model of a larynx, and we have the hyoid bone as the most superior portion here. We have the thyroid cartilage in white, the cricoid cartilage in this light blue, arytenoid cartilages in yellow, and I'm going to turn it so that it's a posterior view, and again you can see the hyoid bone here, the back of the thyroid cartilage in white, the cricoid cartilage ring coming around the back side, arytenoid cartilages in yellow, and we can get a better view here of the vocal folds extending from the, the back side of the thyroid at the notch to the vocal processes of the arytenoid cartilage, the little parts that stick out here. And in particular on this video we're going to look at the movement of the cricothyroid joint where those two come together, but I'm going to turn it around first to the anterior view, the front, so that again we can see the hyoid bone, thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage, and the muscles that extend in between the cricoid and the thyroid cartilages. We have the cricothyroid muscles, and in this video you can see the blue portion of that muscle is the pars recta, and the red portions extending outward are the pars oblique. And the joint that we're looking at here is the movement of the cricothyroid, the joint where those two parts come together, and that's a considered an oval joint, so it has two actions. It can permit the thyroid cartilage to move to glide forward or translate forward here, and in addition it can also pull down, so it has this rocking motion forward and down, like this. We move it back to its original position, so it's gliding forward and moving down. And when that happens, so the thyroid is pulling forward and over the cricoid, and the gap between the two is getting smaller. So here we can see the muscles pulling that way, and they're coming closer together. And the purpose of that is that if we turn it to the posterior side, and we are in a resting position here, if I move that thyroid, sorry, it's pulling my arytenoids off, but if I move that forward and down, if I'm moving the thyroid forward and down, then it's extending these vocal folds, so they're stretching and thinning, particularly in the medial portion on the inside where the vocal folds come together is getting thinner, and that thinner portion is what is vibrating, and because it's thinner it has less mass in that area, and it's able to vibrate at a higher frequency. So it would move back into its normal position, and then pull forward and down in a rocking position in this motion. Maybe from the side we can see that a little better. Forward and down.